Hello. Trees. Ever since you were a tiny tot, you've been drawing trees. And now, it's time for all that practice to pay off. Because today, we're going to add the final feature onto your landscape, which will probably be a big tree. Maybe an evergreen. Maybe a deciduous tree. It could even be a palm tree. Let's get started. The first step to making a tree is to mix up the color for your bark. For this painting, I'm going to start with a very dark bark. I'm going to use yellow and black to make a dark and a greenish bark. Take a deep breath before you begin painting the actual trunk of your tree. This is the main spot where trees get out of control. The name of the game here is keeping the trunk skinny. Paint likes to spread and become wide. So to fight against that, use a small brush and also use light brush strokes. Avoid spreading and widening the bristles by pressing the brush hard against the paper. To do this, take lots of little dips of paint. Uh, that way you're keeping the paint right on the very tip of the bristles. And if you have paint right on the tip of the bristles, you can paint with just the tip of the brush and keep that tree very skinny. It should come up to a very sharp point at the top of it. I'm going to add another slightly smaller tree in the middle and a big old tree on the right side. I always like to have odd numbers of trees in the foreground of my painting. And that's because odd numbers of trees always seem to look more natural than even numbers. Now these tree trunks just need a little bit of texture. So since I'm doing a nighttime scene, I can texture these with pure black paint. If that was a daytime scene, that black paint would be too dark and you might want to mix up just a darker or lighter version of your bark color. But for my painting, I'm gonna go in with that um, palette knife and just scrape and scratch some of those uh, rough looking lines right down the bark of the tree. Being careful not to press hard and actually scrape away the base color, just laying down some of that dark paint on top. I bet these naked trunks are cold out there in the snow. So let's cover them up with some pine needles. The color I'm going to use for my pine needles is a purpley color. I'm gonna use some blue, uh, some red, some white, and some black to make a tone of purple. Then I'm going to roll my brush to get all that extra globby paint off of it and load up just the very end of it, the bristles. If you have a bunch of globby paint on there, you're not gonna get the texture you want in your evergreen trees. Then begin painting the evergreen branches right onto your trunk. You can cover up the trunk in some spots, but don't cover it up all the way. We wanna see bits of that tree trunk peeking through. Use light, feathery, zigzagging brush strokes as you work down the sides of your tree. Also allow your branches to get longer as they go down towards the bottom. I'll add a few branches to the little tree in the middle and a bunch of branches on the big tree on the right, letting some of these branches uh, reach off the page and be cropped. Some can be a little bit shorter and go in, some can reach out long. Be a little bit irregular and natural as you design these branches, all the while using those feathery, zigzag swooping brush strokes very light, brush lightly, so you can see the texture on the end of those bristles. And then I'm going to clean the brush and repeat this process with a different color to increase the texture of these trees. I'm going to add a darker color, kind of like the shadow underneath the branches, by mixing up a dark green. And then I'll feather that darker color in underneath some of the branches. And these trees need just one last touch, a little bit of snow piled on top of the branches. So I mix up the same snow color I used for the mountains and then just lightly dollop that down right on top of the branches, making little globs. And just like that, our big foreground trees are done. There's one more thing I need to add to make this painting sing. And that's just a little bit of brighter glare from the moon casting down onto that empty area in the snow dune. So I'm going to very lightly sweep some white paint across that snow, giving it a reflective look, using a little bit of water to fade it in. And now this painting is officially done. A snowy mountain scene, with some big old pine trees and moonlight on the snow. 
I hope that Bob Ross would be proud. And now that we've painted some pine trees, let's try our hand at some deciduous trees. Before I can paint the deciduous trees on the banks of this lake, I'm first going to have to finish off the banks. I'm going to do this by adding a second color, a texture color, on top of those rocky banks. I'm going to mix up a lighter brown, a warm tan color, and then I'm going to use the palette knife to lightly scrape that lighter color on top of the darker color that I've already laid down for the banks of the lake. As I scrape, I will move and vibrate the palette knife a little bit to get these funky, natural looking rock textures. Scraping this new color on top of the darker patches, but still allowing that darker color to show through in certain spots. I'm imagining that on top of these rocky banks, there's some grass. So I'm going to mix up a grassy color. And I'm going to make sure that this color is a little bit different than the trees in the background. I'm going to make it a little bit greener by adding slightly more blue to it than I did to the trees in the back. Then I'm going to paint this color down, just filling in the white areas on the side of the lake. Any fields or patches of grass in a landscape painting will need grass texture. To do this, you'll have to mix up a second grass color. It's different from that base layer of grass. Once you've mixed up that second color, use the very tips of the bristles, the very ends of the brush, to make light upward sweeps. And each one of those bristles will begin to create a little grass blade growing out of that field. You could also create little bushes in your field or the edges of your lake by just tapping the end of the bristles to make leafier, bushy textures on your grass. Once we've filled up all the grass with texture, it's time for a big old tree. So I'm going to mix up a dark brown for my tree trunk color. And before I paint this color down, I'm going to switch brushes to get to a much smaller brush, medium small brush here. I'm going to very carefully paint a thin tree trunk that stretches all the way up from the grassy bank of that river to the top of the page. Just like when we painted our evergreen trees, the biggest challenge here is to not let this tree trunk get too wide. You don't want any of your tree trunks to be wider than a finger. To keep your tree trunks narrow, dip back into your paint often and make sure that you have a nice glob of paint right on the very tip of that brush. Bring up your tree trunk, allowing it to get more narrow as it come towards the top. For this tree, I'm gonna imagine that it is so big that it actually grows up off the top of the page and is cropped. When you add branches to your tree, make sure they are very skinny and have natural shapes. Sometimes going up, sometimes drooping down. I'm gonna add a little tree in the back there and a medium tree on the left side, not quite as tall as the one on the right. I'm gonna add some branches to that one as well. And the skeletons of our trees are done. And that's actually the hardest part of painting the skeletons. So you can breathe a little sigh of relief once your painting looks similar to this. We're going to add a little bit of texture to these trees by mixing up a lighter brown color and using the palette knife to scrape some of that color onto the bark of the tree, especially in the wider areas of the bark. You don't have to cover the entire tree in texture, just a couple little uh, touches of texture towards the bottom of the tree trunk, a couple spots on the branches or the middle of the trunk. It's gonna look really good. With the bark done, all these trees need now is leaves. When I mix up my leaf color, I'm gonna make sure that it is a different type of green from the trees in the background and the grass so that these leaves really stand out. I'm gonna do this by making them a little bit bluer than the other greens that I have in this painting. Then I'm going to very lightly just tap this green down onto the ends of the branches, covering up parts of the trunk and the branches, but also allowing most of that tree trunk to show through and floating these leaves above and around uh, the trunk and the branches. Tap your brush lightly so you can get the texture from the tips of the bristles and really hold yourself back here. Don't overdo it because if you add too many thick leaves, if your paint is thick and globby and you tap too many times, you're gonna cover up your tree, you're gonna cover up your background, and this leaf layer, this leaf layer is gonna take over and ruin the painting. A light, soft, transparent layer of leaves is what we're after here. Normally I would mix up a second color and add a second color of leaves 
on top of the tree here to increase the texture. But since there's so much going on in the background of this painting and it's looking really good like this, I'm gonna stop. If you ever get to a point where your painting just looks really good, stop there and don't overdo it. Uh, all this painting needs is just a little bit of some darker bluer grass right in the foreground to balance out the darker uh, bluer greens and leaves. So I'm gonna use a very thin brush, bring up a couple tall sprigs of grass in the front. And this sunset lake painting is finished. All right, it's your all's turn, so let's paint some trees. <laughs> 